So, you like hair and you like colors, so why don't you color your hair? I don't know, maybe you... Maybe you have already colored your hair. I don't know if you've colored your hair or not. Hey guys, one by touch by Kai. I'm Kai, and today we are back once again, taking a look at uh, the breakdown. I did a little bit of a video a little bit ago. I posted uh, this hair simulation that I thought was really cool and neat that I was that I came up with off camera, just testing stuff for tutorials, and uh, I figured I'd break it down for you today. So that's what we're gonna do. Uh, I have the hair here, and if I play it, you can see it looks something like this. If you didn't happen to catch that video. Um, yeah, that's it right there. It looks pretty cool. I love it. It's really smooth and really nice and the uh, the color of the hair changes and then of course it repeats right there. So uh, a couple of things with this uh, if I zoom in here on a nice little part of the hair you can see I can see through this but in the final render I actually have this uh, set to a hundred instead of ten. So it looks like that instead. So I just want to mention that I'm only doing it on ten right now so you can see um, so you can see it more fluid because it plays like this if it's on 100. Um, with the rotation, I literally just selected the sphere and then double tapped R, uh, just rotated it to a specific place and then hit I on my keyboard and then just put in rotation. For the actual color changing piece, you can see here I have open my uh, my shader editor, which I just dr drug open from drug I dragged I drug I don't know I dragged open from the, from the left hand side and just changed this little box to the shader editor there. Um, so that's what I did now. This defaultly only comes with the principal BSDF shader. I didn't do anything to that really. I just bumped the specular all the way up, turned the specular tint all the way up. The roughness is on somewhere around 0.4, and then I have a little bit of sheen tint, um, which doesn't make sense because I have no sheen, so we can just turn that down. Um, and we don't need anything else. So it's just the specular, specular tint, and roughness that I changed pretty much. Um, then I grabbed a color ramp. Actually, forget this right now. We can just forget that and this. We don't need either one of those right now. So let's ignore those. So I just went ahead and I hit Shift A and searched for a color ramp node right there. And I just put that down and I hit this little plus button because when it comes up defaultly, when it comes up by default, <laughs> uh, there's this black and white value here. And now to get this to be sharp edged, like you see, this is like sharp edges here instead of the fading. I just changed this from linear to constant. And now you can see if I drag that white, you can see now it has like that little thing that I have over here which is nice so I just plug that in to the um, to the principal BSDF uh, base color and now we have the red um, now the reason I did the red this way with all these different little lines is because I wanted to go ahead and add in a noise texture which is what I did so I hit shift a search and then uh, grab the no, no, not 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 noise noise <laughs> that's a great meme uh, anyway uh, we have the noise texture is what I did not the noise texture uh, and then just plug that in to the factor, the color into the factor there. So I, it was on de default, it was on 5 and 2. I changed that to 3.4 and 16, which 16 is the highest for detail. Um, and what it did was, the regular noise looks like this, uh, which I didn't really like that much, so I kind of changed it to this, uh, which looks much better to me. The color ramp does define the color of the hair particles along with the circle itself. So if I get a new color ramp and plug this in, and plug that in. You'll see that the base color uh, is now determined by the color ramp. So if I, I grab the white, if I grab the white color, it's going to take a while because we have a hundred over here. So let me just real quick just turn this down to ten. You can be able to see it still. Um, all right. So you can see if I grab this black, it kind of has a, a bunch of effect on the uh, sphere and the color of the sphere is what's going to define the color of the hair that's on top of it. So if I go ahead and un do the hair real quick. You see, it looks like this, which is really cool. I put the hair back. Some of these pieces of hair you see up here, they're kind of blackish, kind of darker, you know, through here, which is really sweet. So if you go ahead and hit plus, I can add in another color. And let's say I want to add like in a little blue here. And now you can see some of these hairs are blue. And when I look at the sphere itself, we got a couple blue pieces in between the white and the black, which is what we have right here. And then, of course, if we turn that to constant, you can see that now it is sharp edged over here too, which is really, really cool looking. Put the hair back on and boom now we got blue white and black hairs coming through here which is nice so i just did that a bunch of times until i was happy with the colors of red that i had um because i just thought that looked pretty cool i don't know why i did red first i just did i don't know uh but yeah so that was that for the color ramp so then i have the noise the color ramp and then i was like okay well i kind of want this this color to change and i said it's just too difficult to animate these values and i don't even know if you can yeah you can't you can you can animate these actually but it's just too much to animate all these colors it's one two three four five colors in a row that's just a lot and i don't want to do that so i want to keep all these colors and all these values the same i want to keep all these colors the same as these um, but I just wanted to hue shift it, so I went ahead and I sh hit shift A, search, and then just search for hue, and then grabbed hue saturation, plugged that bad boy in right there, and then every 50 frames, 
I started I started on point one three, and then for the factor I started on zero, and then on f the fiftieth frame I changed to point five three, and then one for the factor, right, and then point nine three zero, and then zero for the factor, and then one for the hue and then one for the factor and then of course the last one is zero for the factor and 0.3 for the hue so now what's happened is every 50 frames it goes back to the red and that's pretty much all for that now really quick with the hair if i play this now oh if i play it now it's going to be messed up because we moved some stuff around anyway uh i'm not going to play that right now because it's going to take a lot of stuff away but let me go to the hair settings real quick so i just went to the particle tab here and hit new on the particle system added a new one for emission, the number is on a thousand. I'm gonna let this play while I'm talking, so we can uh, have that be smooth by the time I'm done again. All right, so um, emission number was on 1,000. The hair length is on 0.9, and I had this shorter, but I really wanted the hair to whip around a little bit, and I think the 0.9 looks really good. If you go higher, it might look even cooler, actually, if you're going for something like that, but I'm gonna leave it the way it is right now. Segments. Segments is a big thing. Up here at the top, you can see I kind of have a little bit of triangular kind of sharpie sharpness up here, which is not too great. If you want to get rid of that, turn the segments up. Turn them up. I think about 30 would probably be good to make it super smooth. Uh, and then that was it for the hair dynamics, pretty much. I think I have the pin goal strength. The pin goal strength is pretty important, too. So the pin goal strength is kind of like stiffness in a way. Um, so what we're going to do is I have that on 0 0.01. I tried a lot of values, and I just like the way 0 0.01 looks a lot. Um, but yeah, we're going to downsize that again, and then we're going to go ahead and scroll on down to, I think, the next and only other thing I messed with was children, and the children help us out a little bit to make this a little bit more thick, because uh, it's not too thick right now, so if I go ahead and put this on none, you can see we have less pieces of hair, which is like we're totally balding, we don't even have any hair more anymore, it's like, we're, what's the point, you might as well just shave it all off, you know what I'm saying, because um, <laughs> it's only a thousand number of uh, hair particles that we have here little tornado hair over here um, so if I put this on simple then it's gonna go ahead and it's gonna add 10 more hairs for every hair that we have so we just doubled well not doubled but we kind of just like added a bunch more hair because every one of the a thousand so a one two three four five six seven all the way up to a thousand we just added 10 more for each of those and that's just for the display when we render this it's gonna add a hundred more for each piece of hair so that's just even crazier um, so I just bumped that up a little bit. I, I turned that on simple, and then I bumped up the uh, random randomized size for um, for the children, and I also bumped up the roundness all the way up. I think the length might have already been on one, but if it wasn't, I put that on one. Uh, for the clumping, I opened up the clumping and kind of did a little tiny bit of stuff to. Actually, I didn't. I took all that off. I did have stuff to this, but I liked it better just straight. Um, if you want the hair to clump, what you can do is either you can put it on negative one i believe negative one is going to clump it at the part where it comes out of the circle and i'm pretty sure one is going to clump it on the ends of the hairs so as far away from the head as you can get as far as away as far away from the circle as you can get so if you want some clumping definitely turn that up um in a new cool uh value that i, I believe we didn't have in 2.79 is twist twist is pretty cool it kind of just like twists the hair up like you had twists or braids it's really pretty cool actually i i didn't a little bit of stuff with it but i just didn't like the way it was looking for this specific render so i kind of just left it alone but i really like the way that looks probably going to do a video on that uh just specifically and in hair more hair in general because it's just a lot of fun to to mess with but i think that was all that i did i don't think i did anything else to this uh hair that is it but uh, yeah, this is almost done uh, recaching itself right now. What it's doing right now is this red line is going all the way across, and what it's doing is it's going ahead and rendering every single thing uh, that there is. Because well, it's not rendering; it's kind of just like caching it into the place. Because when you don't play it, it kind of just gets it kind of gets stale. It's like, hey, this is what we want to see it do. This is what we want the hair to do. And if you change something then Blender's not going to know that, and it's going to get to that specific place, and it's going to have to recache it over and over again. So now we have the red line all the way across. It's working properly now. Um, and if you want to cache this, so you don't have to go through that again, and you can, like, scrub around, and, and it looks perfect and stuff, you just go to cache, and then just make sure this end frame is on your end frame. So I would change this to 200. 200. And then we would go ahead... And then we would go ahead and hit uh, bake all dynamics. Um, but yeah, so that is it for today's tutorial. Hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you in the next one. But until then, bye-bye.